Now, one of the nice things we can do with these models is we can take them apart. So if I carefully remove the top of this, right, we're looking at a sort of a horizontal section here, okay? And if we look at it from this view, this is what I would call a superior view. This is the anterior side of the skull here, the front. This is the posterior side of the skull here, the back, okay? So that means this is our frontal bone, right? Um, these are our temporal bones on the inside. This is our occipital bone back here, okay? But a few things I want to point out. All right. First of all, this structure right here, okay? Do you see this? Do you see this sort of triangular structure right there? Okay? That's actually part of the ethmoid bone. Remember ethmoid bone. N-M-L-E, ethmoid. Okay? Remember the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid? Okay? This is that same ethmoid bone right there. And this is what we call the cribriform plate. This triangular structure is the cribriform plate. And if you look closely, you'll see all these tiny little holes there. Okay? Those are called olfactory foramina. You probably know that olfaction is your sense of smell. So the nerves that run through here and pass nerve tissue through here actually come out into the nasal cavity. So when you smell something, those, those nerve endings pick up on that those odorants and they pass them through the cribriform plate at these olfactory foramina. Another structure we have in the ethmoid bone here is something called the crystal golly. And the crystal golly, the structure right here, is where connective tissue that holds onto your brain and kind of locks it in place in your skull connects to. Okay, so this is a very important feature as well. From here, moving down, moving posteriorly, we come to the sphenoid bone. Okay, the sphenoid bone is this region right in here. I mentioned it in an earlier video that you could see a little bit of it right here. In fact, if I show you the other side, you can see a little bit of it right here as well. Okay. But when we look at this from this view, to me, it always looked like the wings of a bat on either side. Okay. And what we see right here are a few features. First of all, the optic foramen, the optic foramen. Remember, if I took this pointer and poked right through that optic foramen, and I took this pointer over here and I poke it right through that optic foramen, okay, what ends up happening? These structures sort of represent, these pointers kind of represent your optic nerves, but look what it does on the inside right there. It passes right through and it creates something okay, called the optic chiasm. You'll learn about this later. The chiasm is the crossing. That's where the nerves cross and send information, visual information, to opposite sides of the brain. But right where we're poking out, right here, and again on this side, right here, that's the optic foramen, okay? We also have something called the cella tersica. The cella tersica, this is a little saddle region right here where your pituitary gland sits and is protected. And then again, we've got the rest of the sphenoid bone, the wings of the bat, so to speak, out here. Okay. Now, as we look at this closely, you'll notice that there are shadows created here by holes or openings. Okay. So let me point a few of these out. On the side here, right here, has an oval shape. And on this side has an oval shape. This is what we call foramen oval. Remember, foramen is a natural opening or a passageway. Oval, from the term oval, right? Foramen oval, okay? We also have something called the foramen lacerum. You'll see that here. And again, on this side here. You'll see the carotid canal through here. And again, if I poke through this on the inferior side, you'll see me coming out right there. That's the carotid canal. And then we also have, let me poke through it for you here, on the other side of this petrous, petrous ridge here, we have something called the jugular foramen. So the jugular foramen is here, the carotid canal is here, the foramen lacerum is here, and foramen oval. So jugular foramen, where the blue pointer is, 
carotid canal, where I'm pointing here, foramen lacerum, and then the oval-shaped one, foramen ovale. Okay? And the biggest, most prominent opening that we have, of course, is the foramen magnum. Magnum meaning large. And that brings us to the posterior occipital bone. 